Throughout history, the ability to deliver and receive information in a timely manner has decided the fate of many cultures. It is because of this, the most important aspect of technology is its ability to facilitate communication. As you might expect, it is now more important than ever that technology continues to evolve. As recent as 18 years ago, the age of a typical high school graduate, America Online started to become a household name. Phone lines, which previously were reserved for voice communication, were being filled with data as families began connecting to the Internet. Today's youth may not remember these ancient days when the Internet was married to the lovely sound of dial-up modem. Emails and instant messages began to replace the near lost art of personal letter writing. As time passed, we saw the uprising of DSL, cable, and fiber optic networks. The connections became faster and faster, and while the networks were evolving, so were the devices connecting to them. It was no longer just the desktop computer. The laptop computer began to become more and more widely used due to its mobility. But plugging a laptop into a static device defeated the purpose. Introduce the wireless network and boom, your problem is solved. Believe it or not, the concept of a laptop computer originated from a desire to give children access to digital media. It started in 1968 with Alan Kay's DynaBook, which was intended to be used as an educational tool. In the 70s and early 80s, various companies produced and distributed portable computers. These early models were large and heavy, with most weighing over 20 pounds. The limitations of these machines centered around the fact that the hardware making up the computer was still large itself. Apple was the company who took the concept of mobile computing and specifically laptops to the next level. They have basically built the benchmarks by which other laptops are measured. In the 90s, Apple added built-in keyboards, trackballs, and palm rests. Other companies were quick to copy the ideas and provide the same functionality. At one time, you couldn't function without a desktop computer, simply because laptops were not powerful enough to accommodate all of a person's computer needs. As companies developed ways to decrease the sizes of processors, memory, and hard drives without crippling their functionality, laptop computers quickly became smaller, lighter, and much more powerful. More recently, advances in battery life, hard drive space, and memory have made the desktop look like a dinosaur. Winning this war against desktops was not only a victory for the laptop, but a victory for mobile computing. But now, the laptop has to face new challengers in its marketplace. Currently, the arch enemy of the laptop is the tablet. The past is filled with attempts at creating tablet computers that never caught on the way the iPad and Android devices have today. The huge benefit of a tablet is the fact that it is more portable than a laptop while providing similar functionality. Touch screens, on-screen keyboards, and an increased screen size in comparison to a smartphone are huge selling points to some people. This functionality, coupled with ease of use, makes tablets obvious choices for certain environments. When Alan Case conceived the idea of the DynaBook, he intended for it to be used as an educational tool. Apple and Android tablets have made their way into the classroom, and it may seem like a slam dunk that these devices are nothing but good for education. We recently were able to get an educator's point of view on this very topic. When asked her opinion on the use of tablets in the classroom, Sarah Froughton, an educator with 28 years experience, responded with the following. A teacher should be very clear on what they are using um, the technology for and it should never be used in place of a teacher instructing. It should be used in addition to a teacher instructing. Um, recently I spoke with a fellow educator whose child is in our uh, middle school and she was complaining that she spends her whole day on a tablet or a computer in the classroom. She's handed a packet and she works by herself 
and she said, why am I in school if that's all I'm doing? I could be doing this at home and be homeschooled. So I, I think it's important that teachers continue being the instructor, but tablets are, are great as an assistive technology and there's some wonderful applications for them that really can enhance an educational program. Sarah makes a great point. All of this mobile technology is wonderful, but it's important we keep in mind that it is only a tool that should be used to enhance our lives. It's not hard to argue that cell phones have evolved into one of the most widely used mobile computing options in history. It seems like everyone has a cell phone and we are always texting, talking, and surfing on the internet with them. The first cellular phone call was made in 1973, but it took 10 years for the first commercial cellular phone to hit the market in the shape of the iconic Motorola Dynatac 8000X. It weighed 2 pounds, stood 13 inches high, took 10 hours to recharge, and cost almost $4,000. To put that in perspective, that's about the size of a bottle of wine, an expensive bottle of wine. Oops, hold on, I got a text message. Boy, have things come a long way since then. Through time, the phones have become smaller and more powerful. They evolved from being just a device used to make phone calls into personal assistants and very powerful network mobile computers. The advancements of cellular networks including the 3G, 4G, and 5G have made data and voice communication available practically everywhere. Today's Palm, Blackberry, Android, and Apple phones all house more computing power than could have ever been imagined back in the late 60s when mobile computing was in its infancy. Most of today's smartphones have the same functionalities as their relatives, the tablet computers, with screen size being the biggest differentiator. But as these phones evolve even more, I think the line between the tablet and smartphone will be blurred until they merge into a single device. One thing's for sure, it's obvious that mobile computing will never sit still. Pun intended. So the next time you are out and about with the World Wide Web at your fingertips, don't take it for granted. Think back on how far we've come and how all of our mobile devices are competing for our attention. Well, think about it after you respond to that text message you just received.